If your watercolor paintings seem lifeless to you, there's something you can do to dramatically improve. What seems to happen a lot of times is that we want to paint a subject just as we see it. And even for an experienced artist, you will clearly see how copying the reference photo isn't the solution. I touched on how to leverage color to improve a painting already in my previous video, but you'll see this is even more powerful. And you might not agree if I say that I don't like that painting that I did last year because to me it looks nice and realistic, but I was a little bit disappointed after finishing it because I find that it lacks the freshness and the lightness watercolors can convey and I've had that problem with a lot of my works because they're very faithful to the reference photo, but I learned that does not mean that they'll turn out to look good as a painting. So how is it that other paintings with similar dark and muted tones feel so much lighter than? The difference, I think, is they have white paper parts that actually show, like is the case in this landscape with the sun rays, or in that piece here, where the clothing has these very dark and muted colors I love, but in contrast, we also have this bright paper white part all around. And this is another example with a lot of paper white highlights showing in the fabric. And my conclusion has been that even though style and color impact the looks of a watercolor painting, to really end up with something that feels fresh and beautiful like watercolors have the reputation to look like, keeping some amount of paper white highlights is an absolute must. And I've had to develop a trick for that when the reference photo is not going to help. I'll feature two free stock and splash photos and the matching paintings today so you can see different examples and how I approach each. This first one has a lot of visible whitish parts, so as you can imagine, it's going to be easier to anticipate white highlights. Well, this one, like the other pumpkin I showed you earlier, barely has any noticeable light parts. And the trick here is to find a pumpkin photo with a lot of highlights so that you can pull from that element only and use it together with your reference. With the landscape, I decided to max out the highlights in the rocks, which caused me to have to draw a lot of them accurately when before I would have just painted the water and added all the rocks on top without sticking to the reference as much. Then I would have had some white gouache highlights to finish. So definitely the sketching takes a lot longer here, but I think that with watercolor, it's well worth it. With a pumpkin, I decided to sketch my unsplashed version more like this other one, and that's why the wedges are a lot more defined now. That's where the highlights are, and I wanted to make sure that I know where to place them. You can see the positioning of the pumpkin is still like the unsplashed version, however, so this is really how you can pull from one photo as inspiration for another project. With these first two paintings, my takeaway was that the sketch really needs to be accurate in order to preserve the paper white highlights. And the next question after that was to know how I was going to start painting. And with the whites from the paper in particular, the way that you start the painting is really important. With my landscape painting, I knew to work on white paper to recreate this blurry effect between the trees, the rocks, and the light sky and water. In a painting like this one, it's easy to preserve white parts because on the photo, there's a lot of sky and water showing and they look almost white already. And that explains why before I started focusing on preserving paper white highlights better, I would paint like this and get these glowing watercolor effect in some paintings almost by accident. A tip for you if you like to add a second layer like me is to start wetting the white parts first in case your paint lifts and goes muddy those areas. As you might foresee, the pumpkin was a bit more challenging. You have this dark background and you're supposed to contrast that to bright parts on the pumpkin itself. But with watercolor, it's tough because whenever there is water, even just a little bit, the paint spreads out. And if you have tried contouring a subject before with watercolor, it's really tedious and it doesn't always yield the best results. So that's why here I went with another strategy. I applied drawing gum inside the pumpkin to make sure those edges stayed completely white. 
It allowed me to use the same technique I just showed you and just paint the background on wet paper without worrying about the pumpkin at all. And you can see that even after two layers on that background, no paint crept underneath the drawing gum and the edges stayed sharp and white. So make sure to use thin layers of drawing gum or masking fluid and try and check how the paper reacts to it when you remove it because beginners often have problems with the paper tearing when they try and remove it. So it's really just a matter of trying it out and practicing the best way to use it for you. I think it's also important to point out that these are only two ways to approach a painting when you want to keep the paper white highlights because sometimes I will contour a subject or I will even use masking tape and if that interests you, I do have a Skillshare class just about that and I'll link it in the description of the video. After you've found the best approach to keep those white highlights, it's time to paint and while the wet and wet method, the one where you wet the paper and then paint, works really well to keep large white parts in blurry backgrounds, it's a bit trickier for smaller areas like the rocks and sharp ones like our pumpkin, especially when the art is meant to look realistic. And I used to believe paper wet highlights looked very unnatural in watercolor painting, which is why I went straight to white gouache, but we all change our minds. So more and more, I try and keep them and I keep gouache for small touches. A technique that I love because it works so well in making bright highlights from the paper look natural is to apply the paint and soften the harsh edges into the bare paper with a clean and damp paintbrush. I teach this technique everywhere so you can find it here on my YouTube channel, all my Skillshare classes, and also my Patreon tutorials. I even have a beginner exercise to show you how to do it and more complex paintings like this pumpkin. It's really important to make sure the paintbrush you use to soften your edges really is clean. So try and have a water jar with clean water in it when you try this and always use a paper towel to get rid of excess water Otherwise, you might create blooms on your painting. And the bloom is when the excess water from the brush pushes away the drying paint that was already on paper. Realistic painting means some amount of layering. It's when you add another layer of paint on top of the one you just did after it has completely dried. And I use this technique a lot. So I'm not sure what your preference is. Mine is more contrast and realism. That's why I didn't want to keep the pumpkin looking that bright. With the rocks same, I wanted more depth, better shadows. More shadows also contrast with the paper white parts more, so it's really up to you to decide how much of a contrast you want between the two. The problem for everyone, even for people who don't want to layer as much as I, the more that we keep working on a watercolor, the more we are risking losing natural white highlights again because of the water and how paint spreads out into wherever the water is. And it happens to me a lot. And even a friend with a looser style was telling me the same just yesterday. That's why I wanted to make this video in the first place because it's so common to lose the highlights. The best way to keep the ones we worked so hard on preserving is to not wet that whole area anymore like we do in the wet and wet technique. And instead, to work on the section and dry paper, like I did here. And there you need to be really intentional in keeping those first highlights intact. It's really easy to forget, and while I had enough room on this large pumpkin, I really had to be cautious with the rocks. If you are a beginner, you can do that too with time and practice. I know it's not always easy to be patient, but all I can say is that the results are so rewarding, it is worth it. Before revealing the final paintings and I even frame those, I'm going to share some great tips. Sometimes there are highlights that you just cannot preserve. They are simply too small to even bother. With the rocks, I didn't feel that I needed any more, so I left the painting as it was, no gouache. With a pumpkin, you can see that the stem was really dark and it would have been so tedious to try and keep small highlights there that I decided to add just a tad of white gouache. But first, the paint was so dark there that I knew that lifting some of it with a thirsty brush would help, even though preserving the paper completely is way better for maximum luminosity. 
That's why I wouldn't fully rely on this lifting technique. And then I went easy on the gouache. And I think that's key in keeping the fresh watercolor look, as well as never underestimating those paper white highlights because they are what will make your paintings shine the most. I will also often use white gouache to fix small things, like the edge of this pumpkin wedge here, for example. My drawing gum also left small marks on the paper on the left side of the pumpkin, so I concealed that with the gouache. These two paintings are already gone and sitting in a beautiful shop in my town today, so I'm very happy. And next, I can show you how to leverage color to make your paintings even more fresh and beautiful in this video right here. I hope you enjoyed all the tips. I sure had fun practicing keeping natural highlights. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.